Hello guys, my name is Chris Jamerson. My family had a home up in Virginia the uh, past couple summers ago, and we would go up there every now and then. And we knew this guy up there, his name was Steve Morris. His middle name was Chicken, Steve Chicken Morris. So as you can guess, he raised chickens. He gave us this little nugget of wisdom uh, a couple years back. He told us that when he's got 500 bad chickens, and he's got 500 good chickens, he doesn't want to mix the 500 bad chickens with the 500 good chickens. Now, what a good chicken is and what a bad chicken is, I don't know. But he said that when you mix the 500 bad chickens with the 500 good chickens, now you've got a 1,000 bad chickens. There's a common scenario in the workplace, and I'm sure that you can relate to it. Um, you might constantly be asking yourself the question, how is that person still working here? You know, we get these people all the time. We just, how is that guy still working here? How has he not been fired yet? Our companies and organizations pour enormous amounts of money into human resources, searching for the best employees. We give them these different names, the rock stars, the superstars, those high performers, the top employees. They all have one thing in common. They are benefiting the company in a meaningful and financial way. Now, these superstars take up about 20% or less of the workforce and bring in about 80% of the revenues. Human Resources spends more time and more dollars finding these top 20%, these top tier employees, um, than the entire rest of the 80% of the workforce. So before we move on, I'd like to introduce you to two really smart guys. We got Dylan Miner and Michael Hausman. These guys came together and analyzed data based on 50,000 frontline workers. There's those workers that are working hourly, generally at an entry level position or slightly above that. Their research and analysis was enlightening on the aspects of our interactions with what we deem as toxic workers. Now, who is a toxic worker? These are people that participate in deconstructive, negative, or abusive behaviors. Namely, these people are either chronically depressed or negative, always uh, pointing the blame to somebody else. They can be very dogmatic people, people that are just will not move in their opinion on a certain uh, thing in the workplace. Um, they could be angry people. They could be violent people. Now, another thing to note is the essence of the word toxic. It's supposed to infer that something is bad, but that it is also infectious. Getting back to our bad chicken analysis, these toxic workers, just by the very nature of the word toxic, are infectious to the rest of the workplace. Their negative behaviors, sometimes their angry behaviors, and even as far as their criminal behaviors, will in fact, the rest of your workplace and sometimes other members of the workplace are going to start committing those same behaviors. These are the type of people that you don't want in your organization or workplace for a multitude of reasons. They cost you money by not performing well. These people can be fairly easy to spot and often get terminated as a result. The ones to look out for, though, are the high performers. Managers tend to overlook other negative characteristics of these toxic workers as long as they are performing well. When they don't realize, though, is that they are actually costing the company far more money than they are actually bringing in, and especially in comparison to our star workers, our superstar workers. Now, let's take a look at this chart from the Hausman and Miner studies. They found that avoiding a toxic worker, you stand to save thousands of dollars versus keeping or finding a superstar worker. Managers and human resource professionals don't understand that toxic workers cost us way more than their superstar counterparts. So how do we get rid of them? Well, first step, don't hire them in the first place. This is not quite as hard as it sounds. We have to train our human resource professionals to identify applicants that have the tendencies to be toxic. So not only do we need to have a line of questioning about skills and experience, but we need to also add a dimension of toxicity to the questions that we're asking about these candidates. According to Hausman and Miner, look out for those people that are overconfident, self-regarding, and openly profess to following the rules. Second step, and probably the more important step, we need to identify and manage the toxic workers that are already embedded into our workplace. Sometimes for years they've been embedded. We need to utilize the research that's provided to us and create a program for turning toxic workers back into average workers. And if that doesn't work, we need to just let them go. So if you want to save your company money and increase your net income, start by shifting some of those HR dollars from finding those elusive superstars and rather managing the threat of toxicity 
in your workplace. Thank you.